Hi, everyone. Welcome to our second episode of Morning Book Buzz. We hope that you guys brought the coffee. I know I did. Do you guys all have your coffee? Yeah, awesome. I have my coffee. And <laughs> we also brought the book. We're so thrilled to be back. I love seeing already all the people from all over the country, and even I see Ontario, Canada. We saw someone in West Palm Beach. Hello, Virginia. We're so thrilled that all of you came back to join us, or maybe it's your first time, but we are the Penguin Random House Library Marketing Team. My name is Jen Rubens, and um, just a note, as you can see on your screen, PRH Morning Buzz is the hashtag, so please use it. Please tell us what you think, what you want to hear, what's making you happy, which we're going to show you some of what made you guys happy last week. We love seeing your homework spaces, and we're going to dive into the book. So let's let's get started. I want to make sure we introduce ourselves. So next slide, please. Let's see. Maestro. <laughs> <laughs> oh, our slides are moving. There we go. Okay. Oh, wait. Before we go to the slide where we introduce ourselves, this was a really important question that came up last week. So we have a format key. When we get to the book slides, you'll see HC stands for hardcover, ebook, stands for ebook. Um, AD is audio download, CD is compact disc, LP is large print, and TR is trade paperback. Um, and if you have any questions as we go, just to note there is a chat box on the side if you want to make any comments or, or notes or just say hi. And then if you have a question for us, we do have um, our lovely team is standing by answering questions in the Q&A box. So please use that and we will do our best to answer all questions immediately or as we go. Um, so let's introduce our lovely Morning Buzz panel. Go right, ahead. I'll kick us off. Good morning, everyone. I'm Erica Melnichok, and I'm so happy to be buzzing with you today from Connecticut. Shout out to all my Connecticut librarian friends logged in today. Nice to see you. Hi, guys. I'm Maureen Meekins. I'm in New Jersey, and thanks for tuning in with us this morning. Hi, everyone. I'm Chelsea Good. Uh, you may recognize my name from the Q&A bot. Uh, <laughs> last week, but here's my face now, coming live from Pennsylvania, so excited to be with you all. We're so happy to see your face. Um, and I'm, as I said, Jen Rubens, I'm coming at you from Brooklyn, and um, oh my gosh, next slide, before we get started, uh, we were suffering already, oh my gosh, so feel free to use the hashtag at home. <laughs> you guys are so shocked. Um, we have a pop quiz. PRH Morning Buzz. We want to hear your answers too, but I'm going to pick first on Erica. Pop Thank quiz. Thank you. I love pop. Love pop. Because <laughs> homeschooling is not enough. We need to make sure you're getting homeschooled as well. So <laughs> what are you reading or listening to right now? Well, that's a good question. Um, I'll confess I've been having some trouble focusing on fiction lately which is unusual for me, um, but I have turned to books, as I always do, um, for fun and for comfort. So uh, I actually moved, this is a long answer, I moved last week, so I don't have a lot of books on hand, but I did grab from my shelf a book about running with, uh, running with meditation, a meditative mind, um, wow. because I, I figured if one thing, one good thing could come from all this is that maybe I'll finally become a jogger. Uh, and make use of some good mental health endorphins, uh, but the jury is still out on that, but it's a good book um, uh, for running with a meditative mind. That sounds perfect. That's impressive. Right yeah. <laughs> it's not really impressive, but I'm trying. It is. It's impressive. It's the trying that matters. <laughs> That's right. Well, thanks for indulging me. And now we're going to move on to some resources. And I do want to add as well, there's going to be a survey at the end. Hopefully you guys filled it out last week. We have been reading the answers. We want to make sure we're best serving you guys and what you want to hear and learn from these book buzzes or, or what you want to celebrate with us. So we will keep reading the answers. So fill out those surveys. And here we go with some resources. Uh, yes, we want you to know, librarians, that we see you. We're watching all of your socials for your library systems as you have so deftly pivoted your services online and you're amplifying all your digital resources. Uh, we know that though your doors may be closed, uh, you never stop helping your patrons. Uh, and we're here to make things a little easier for you in these uncertain times with a large number of digital resources of our own for your use. Uh, from book club brochures to videos for story time and links to virtual author appearances. We hope that these resources can be a lifeline for you and your patrons 
Uh, we're continuously updating these pages for you, so please visit us. Okay, and some audiobook resources. Um, we have a volumes app. If you're not aware, um, it's free. You can download it wherever you get your apps. Um, it's available for iOS and for Android. And right now we have a really wonderful opportunity to add three family listens to your home libraries through April 30th. You can get The Wonderful Wizard of Oz, which is read by Brooke Shields, with an appearance by Paul Rudd. Um, he reads the, <laughs> the first intro part. Um, Grimm's Fairy Tales, which has an amazing full cast of incredible audiobook narrators, including Jim Dale, you may have heard of. Um, and we also have Great Expectations, read by John Lee. So this is a great opportunity for both you, the librarians, and also to spread the word to your patrons. We know that holds lists for many titles can be high, and we hope that you can enjoy these free family listens um, throughout the month. And once you download them on your app, they are yours as long as you have the app forever. And then also, this is the author. Um, as a lot of people have been saying, it's, it's kind of hard to concentrate a little bit nowadays, depending on what our different situations and lives are looking like. And this is the author is a really bite-sized, consumable, easy to digest um, podcast. They're about 15 minutes long most of the time. And it's an inside look at not only what it's like to record an audiobook, but an opportunity to really hear from the authors that we love in a situation that is oftentimes unique to them. So they've just recorded an audiobook. They talk about why they wrote their books, what it was like to go back and read them, um, which is not something they always you know, experience on a normal day to day. So it's a really great way to get more readers advisory ideas from hearing the authors themselves. So check out This is the Author wherever you find podcasts. So we wanted to add, as we talk about de-stressing, whether you're jogging or cooking, um, what we're enjoying right now, whether you have kids or not, is, is listening to audiobooks while we color. And I know this is not a new idea, but one we wanted to remind you about, because especially with the uptick in um, the need for downloadable audiobooks, this is a great suggestion to give patrons to fill their days with a little more calm and creativity. Um, I, I loved reading recently, it says, according to clinical psychologist Scott M.B., it has everything to do with refocusing our attention, which is why we love uh, um, coloring books. Adult coloring requires modest attention focused outside of self-awareness, which I think we all need a little bit of right now. And obviously, it's just a simple activity that takes us outside of ourselves. So here are some suggestions that many you may know about. Some you may not know are available on audio, and I think that makes them really special. The new Dr. Seuss. I had to have a prop guy. <laughs> Dr. Seuss's <laughs> Horse Museum is read by Samira Wiley. Um, Roald Dahl's Matilda is read by Kate Winslet. I mean, what a beautiful way to, to spend the day coloring with your families or by yourself and listening to some of these magical audiobooks. So we hope you'll check them out or maybe even listening to poetry, which is great for Poetry Month. So just a few ideas there. Jen, I forgot. I have to tell you, I've been doing that. Um, you have? Listening. I have. I in my packing, I unearthed a Jane Austen coloring book. <gasps> oh. We've been listening. I've been listening with my boys to Charlotte's Web, and oh. um, we've all been coloring it. I a love, love the new Charlotte's Ten Charlotte. minutes of. <laughs> I've been doing that. I know. This is our latest work that we listened um, to John Cena's Elbow Grease while creating this very calming, beautiful piece of <laughs> But it's really cool to sound effects. And, um, but Charlotte's Web is such a good one, too. Hello. I have more room on the slide. <laughs> Uh, with oh, First Look is me. Uh, with First Look Book Club, we've partnered with DearReader.com to deliver to your inbox free email excerpts. Um, with just one title featured each week. So by Friday, you've read about the first 30 pages of a book. And sometimes it's a book you wouldn't have otherwise have picked up. It's a new genre, a new author. Um, and it's, so it's the perfect way to get a new taste for those. And you can also use it in your reader's advisory work, um, but also feel free to encourage your patrons to sign up for this. Um, and they can enjoy the fun each week along with us. Oh, so as I mentioned, we're so glad that you guys participated with the PRH Morning Buzz hashtag. We hope you're still using it this morning. And on a go forward, share what's making you happy. We loved seeing your faces, your, your earphones, your, um, your lovely workspaces, your coffee mugs, your flowers. So thanks for sharing that with us. It really made us happy to know what's making you guys happy. And so we hope you'll continue. And we're going to have a prompt later on in the show. Stay tuned. We're going to have a new question for you guys to answer for us on the PRH Morning Buzz hashtag. So stay tuned to find out what that is. 
So this is just a sampling of the upcoming events that our industrious colleagues throughout Penguin Random House have been coordinating for our authors during this, uh, during this difficult time. Um, and they're hosting them across any and all digital platforms uh, of your choosing. So whatever you feel most comfortable with, which is whichever author or book you're most interested in, um, there's something here for everybody. Um, and also this is being uh, continuously updated please be sure to check the webpage, penguinrandomhouse.com. Uh, books connect us live very often for all the new offerings. Um, I'm personally attending a Minecraft for Parenting event on Friday uh, that I'm excited about. <laughs> exciting. <laughs> that sounds great. That's interesting. I'm excited about Alan Cumming. I adore him. Oh, I, my I God. I love Alan Cumming. His story time to my son. I'm like, we're all in. <laughs> Oh my God! <laughs> the biggest surprise is going to be what instrument am I going to pull out next? If I have like a cello next time, that would be awesome, right? Um, <laughs> so who am I going to pick for this pop quiz? I think Maureen. What was your favorite childhood book? Uh, actually, it was Tuck Everlasting. Uh oh. It was the first book I ever asked for as a gift for my birthday instead of a toy. Oh, <laughs> that's, that's big. So sweet. That was, it was big stuff. My mom was like, all right, she's going to be okay. <laughs> <laughs> I remember weeping as a kid, I think, and being like embarrassed in school. We read that and I didn't want to cry <laughs> my class. <laughs> but that's a sweet pick. And on to the books. <laughs> All right. So first up, we're going to talk about some big science fiction and horror titles, and who better to kick off this category than Max Brooks? So I'm sure you all know Max Brooks as the number one best-selling author of World War, World War Z, and now he's back with Devolution, which tells the story of a small community in Washington State that suddenly finds itself cut off from the rest of the world when Mount Rainier erupts. As the community struggles for survival, they begin to get glimpses of humanoid beasts straight out of local legend, run closer and hungrier with each passing day. Pa uh, part survival narrative, part bloody horror tale, part scientific journey into the boundaries between truth and science, this is a Bigfoot story as only Max Brooks could chronicle it, and like none you've ever read before. And so for those patrons who want to escape to other terrifying worlds, we have more great suggestions. Um, I'm sure many of you also know Grady Hendrix, the author of a number of other horror tales, including Horror Store, My Best Friend's Exorcism, and We Sold Our Souls. His newest book, the top li library reads pick for April, is The Southern Book Club's Guide to Slaying Vampires. And it's best described as Steel Magnolias meets Dracula. This is perfect for fans of Stephen King, and this 90s set horror, horror novel is about a woman's book club that must do battle with a mysterious newcomer to their, newcomer to their small southern town. We also have The Deep by Alma Katsu. Uh, from the acclaimed and award-winning author of The Hunger comes an eerie psychological twist on the sinking of the Titanic and the ill-fated sail of its sister ship, the Britannica. Brilliantly combining the supernatural with the height of historical disaster, The Deep is an exploration of love and desire, destiny and innocence, and above all, a quest to understand how our choices can lead us inexorably toward our doom. And next up we have Sean Hamill's debut, A Cosmology of Monsters. This tender and terrifying literary horror novel tells the story of a family, creators of a haunted house attraction called The Wandering Dark, and the hereditary monsters, both metaphorical and all too real, that haunts them. And Stephen King says of the book, if John Irving ever wrote a horror novel, it would be something like this. I loved it. And finally, we have Josh Mallerman's Mallory, the thrilling sequel to Bird Box, the inspiration for the record-breaking Netflix film starring Sandra Bullock that was watched by over 45 million Netflix Netflix accounts in the first week. From the mind of a true master of suspense comes the next chapter in this riveting tale. This time Mallory is front and center and she will confront the dangers of her world head on. Oh my gosh, I am so terrified. I, know, I didn't watch that movie, I have to admit, but I know people <laughs> who did, like, loved it. And we're so thrilled, um, just to note for fans of Bird Box, the original book and audio book, the same narrator is back. Cassandra Campbell will read Mallory, just to give you a little bit of a hint there. And then I know we're talking about Max Brooks' Devolution. I don't, Devolution or Devolution? I will find it. That's what audiobooks are for. When is your question? I don't know who's reading it yet, but I just have to add from an audio perspective, when it comes to Max Brooks, he's such a huge audio fan, and he always, he and his producer, Dan Zitt, work together to make sure their productions are 
truly spectacular. And when it comes to audiobooks that kind of are good gateway audiobooks to introduce people to the format, perhaps if they've never tried it before. World War Z is always at the top of everyone's list. So if you've never listened to World War Z or if patrons are looking to try an audiobook for the first time right now during this period, World War Z is a great one, especially because it's written as an oral history. And it has people like, well, Max Brooks is the interviewer, and then Martin Scorsese is on the recording, Nathan Fillion from... Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I mean, I don't have to say, I don't have to introduce this, <laughs> but also people from the cast of Star Trek, Battlestar Galactica, Heroes, Alan Alda. I mean, there's so many great, classic, amazing actors on that production. So I highly recommend that one too. And then I remember when our producer from the audio team, Nick Martorelli, talked about a cosmology of monsters. He also does our Star Wars audiobook. So when he really raves about an audio production, you pay attention. And he <laughs> used music and sound effects. Um, to occasionally shift the point of view in Cosmology of Monsters. So I highly recommend that audiobook as well. It's very cool. And then also just to mention, The Deep um, is narrated by a BBC radio actress. So if you want to fully enter that world, who better to do it um, than someone who does those kinds of radio productions all the time? So we know that diversity in books is so important to readers. And not only do diverse books teach us about others, but they help promote respect and empathy for all types of people. So this is a list of just some of the must-haves for those patrons that are eager to hear from a variety of voices. One of our most anticipated reads is A Burning, and it's a debut novel from Mega Majumdar. Majumdar writes with dazzling assurance at a breakneck pace on complex themes that read as the components of a thriller class, fate, corruption, justice, and what it feels like to face profound obstacles and yet nurture big dreams in the wake of a catastrophe in contemporary India. I think this one is sure to be in high demand for diverse book clubs, so definitely keep an eye on that. And in the same vein, these other great diverse books are going to be ones that you're going to want to share with your patrons and recommend for diverse book groups as well. So I'll start with Deacon King Kong. This is James McBride's first novel since his National Book Award winning The Good Lord Bird. Here, McBride brings to vivid life the people affected by a local shooting. The victim, the African-American residents who witnessed it, the white neighbors, the local cops assigned to investigate, the members of the local Baptist church, the neighborhood's Italian mobsters, and the shooter himself. The New York Times book review says it's terrific, deeply felt, beautifully written, and profoundly humane. And you may already recognize this next read I'm going to mention, The Girl with the Louding Voice, because it was a Read with Jenna Today Show book club pick. It's powerful. It's an emotional debut novel told in an unforgettable voice of a young Nigerian woman who's trapped in a life of servitude, but determined to fight for her dreams and choose her own future. It's been named the most anticipated book of 2020 by New York Times, Marie Claire, Vogue, Pop Sugar, and a whole ton more. And Bestiary by K Ming Chang is strikingly original and poetic with a dash of magical realism. It's wildly inventive, diverse fiction that retells myths in contemporary ways, similar to Helenoya Yemi's Boy Snow Bird. This is definitely another one that diverse book clubs won't want to miss. It's about three generations of Taiwanese American women who are haunted by the myths of their homeland in a story about one family's queer desires, violent impulses, and buried secrets. Uh, and I also want to mention De Donde Venimos, the Spanish language edition of Where We Came From by Oscar Casares, uh, one of Kirkus Review's best books of the year. This is a stunning and timely novel about a Mexican-American family in a Texas border town who reluctantly become involved in smuggling immigrants into the United States. So timely, definitely going to be on the lookout for this for book groups as well. And just to add on from an audio standpoint, as Maureen said, uh, with these diverse reads, the you know way it opens us up to other cultures and, and people's lives who we may not know about or also just seeing ourselves represented in different ways, the audiobook really brings that to light as well, I think, in a really important way in terms of giving voice to yeah. um, different cultures, different accents, different parts of the world, um, or even within our own countries. So I think there's a lot of... 
you know, awareness and importance, especially when it comes to producing these audiobooks, to make sure that the voices that tell these stories are the right voices, which is always really the case, but especially, I think, um, shines shines in, in titles like these. And I know with a burning, um, Aaron Blank, the producer, is thrilled that he has a cast of six authentic voices who are going to bring this to life in the best way. Um, I have their list here. It just was announced, Priya Iyer, Celia Sandhya Daniels, Sonilia Nankani, Rajiv Surendra, Vikas Adam, and Deepta Gupta. Deepti Gupta. So we're so thrilled to have them on board to read this. I know the casting was extremely important for Burning. And also, I saw someone was so thrilled to meet Mega at PLA. We were too. It was just so lovely to meet her, and we're thrilled that this is on the top of your TBR list. And I'll also add um, that um, Deacon King Kong is read by Dominic Hoffman. He's been getting rave reviews for his narration of this. I highly recommend, especially because Maureen went through some of the many characters that are in this book, and it's just incredible that he really can bring that richness and multi-textured um, you know, way of, of exposing the story through all those different characterizations and accents. It's really incredible to listen to. You ready for uh, yep. social justice in a time of social distancing? Uh, a lot of meeting, meaningful social justice conversations are uh, being amplified during this health crisis, and there are just so many titles that can help to inform your patrons depending on their area of interest. So for example, I recommend A Knock at Midnight um, for those that are interested in issues concerning our prison populations. Brittany K. Barnett was only a law student when she came across the case that would change her life forever, that of Sharonda Jones, who was serving a life sentence without parole, all for a first-time drug offense. In Sharonda, Brittany saw haunting echoes of her own life, both as the daughter of a formerly incarcerated mother and the once girlfriend of an abusive drug dealer. Driven by the knowledge that her client's fates could easily have been her own, Brittany soon found herself on a quest to unlock the human potential of those abandoned by society. This is for readers of social justice books like The New Jim Crow, American Prison, and Just Mercy. Uh, you can recommend this too for viewers of documentaries like Ava DuVernay's 13th, Fox's Proven Innocent, and the Netflix dra uh, drama When They See Us. Uh, another suggestion for social justice uh, for the incarcerated that I recommend is uh, When Truth is All You Have. Yeah, as a former management consultant, Jim McCloskey uh, became very disenchanted uh, with corporate life and uh, enrolled in his mid-30s at the Princeton Theological Seminary. He uh, later went on to establish Centurion Ministries, the first group in America devoted to overturning wrongful convictions. Together with a team of forensic experts, lawyers, and volunteers, through tireless investigation and an unflagging dedication to justice, Centurion has freed 63 prisoners and counting. In addition, in addition to providing a foreword, John Grisham uh, had taken inspiration from McCloskey's life in crafting his latest novel, The Guardians, about a minister turned prisoner advocate. Uh, and then we can turn our social justice lens uh, to the humanitarian crisis at our southern border and immigration reform uh, and strongly recommend the Line Becomes Forever by Francisco Cantu, uh, which is available in both English and Spanish. For Francisco, the border is in the blood. His mother, a park ranger and daughter of a Mexican immigrant, raised him in the scrublands of the Southwest. Haunted by the landscape of his youth, he actually uh, later joined the Border Patrol. This is a searing and unforgettable memoir that makes urgent and personal the violence of our border and reeks, uh, the violence reeks on both sides of the line. You could recommend this alongside Behind the Beautiful Forevers and Redeployment. Uh, for continued reading in our post Me Too Consciousness, uh, entitled Sheds New Light on Gender and Power and offers a, version, a vision of a world in which women are just as entitled as men to our collective care and concern. This is recommended alongside uh, Bad Feminist by Roxane Gay, uh, we Should All Be Feminists, and uh, Men Explain Things to Me, which is one of my favorites. Uh, it's uh, from Kate Mann is a Cornell philosopher, and she's offering a radical new framework for understanding misogyny. 
ranging widely across the culture from Harvey Weinstein and the Brett Kavanaugh hearings to the political misfortunes of Elizabeth Warren, she really examines them all. Um, and then for readers um, of Evicted by Matthew Desmond and Housing Advocates, you can recommend Troop 6000, which is the inspiring true story of the first girls scout troop founded for and by girls living in a homeless shelter in Queens, New York, and the amazing nationwide response that it subsequently sparked. When um, the author's article for the New York Times first ran, it immediately went viral, uh, inspiring people everywhere, from Today to Teen Vogue to media venues around the world. Everyone wanted to hear more about these girls, and they became a new face for homelessness, one of both heartbreak and hope. Troop 6000 is both the intimate story of one group of girls who find pride in community with one another, and the larger story of how, when we come together, we can find support and commonality and experience joy and success, no matter how challenging life might be. And I think that that title in particular is one that um, has a lot of lessons that we could all use right now. I agree. Um, and also, I see your comments about all of us speaking up a little bit, so we will definitely do that. Hopefully, you can hear me better now. Um, and just to add on for audio, well, Troop 6000 is read by Robin Miles, who anyone who is a fan of audiobooks hopefully is familiar with her. She is fabulous. And then we haven't announced casting for the others yet um, that are to be published, um, but I will mention, one, there are a lot of questions about where eGalleys are available. So, of course, um, Net NetGalley, I almost said Netflix, because you can see where my brain is. <laughs> so, NetGalley and Edelweiss um, are where they are available, and um, you know, let us know if you need to be whitelisted to be able to download those. And um, I'm hopeful on the audio front that A Knock at Midnight and When Truth is All You Have and that entitled will be read by the authors, but it hasn't been confirmed yet. But I think um, these are examples of books that are, you know, really empowered by having that author voice behind them quite often. And, and that's really exciting and impassioned way to experience the story. And um, the line, the line becomes a river is read in the English version on audio by the author. And so if you want to experience him reading that, um, you can check out the audio version there. So your patrons are probably binge watching some of the top thriller movies and TV series out there on right Netflix. now <laughs> on Netflix or Hulu, <laughs> Amazon, wherever. Um, but these are equally binge worthy thriller books that are the perfect distraction for your readers right now. Uh, so I'll start with Seven Lies by Elizabeth Kay. It's coming in June and it's a seductive hypnotic page turner about the tangled, toxic friendships between women, the dark underbelly of obsession, and what we stand to lose in the name of love. Best-selling thriller author Harlan Coben says, keep the lights on, you'll be turning pages deep into the night with this one. So definitely a binge read right there. That's and <laughs> yeah, I know, I have like a stack of 15 thrillers right now for binge reading, so I'm ready. Um, then I want to talk about The Familiar Dark by Amy Engel. This is a spellbinding story of a mother with nothing left to lose who sets out on an all-consuming quest for justice after her daughter is murdered on the playground. And I recently heard Amy speak at an event where she told us that her inspiration for her writing actually comes from her real life experiences as a former criminal defense attorney. So not only are the stories that she's writing incredibly real, but the research and the details are spot on. Um, and I believe the eGalley for this is still available if you do want to dig in. Dip in. <laughs> 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 I guess it doesn't matter. Um, in Playing Nice, the gripping new psychological thriller from J.P. Delaney, best-selling author of The Girl Before, which I'm sure you've heard of. I read it, and I, I could not put that book down. So this one I dipped into immediately. Um, there's two families that learn that their sons were switched at birth by an understaffed hospital. That's a nightmare. But when their plan to sue the hospital triggers an official investigation, it unearths some disturbing questions about the night that their children were switched. So there's more to the story. 
and Safe by S.K. Barnett is a dark, twisty, psychological suspense about a kidnapped girl who returns home after 12 years, but we learn that coming home may not be as easy as she thought. And as people start to welcome her back, the questions begin. Where has she been all these years? Why is she back now? And is home really the safest place for her or for any of them? Lee Child raves about this one, saying it's fantastically good and insanely suspenseful, and that even the twists have twists. Um, and exciting news for this, film rights have already been snapped up by DreamWorks, so we know this is going to be a hit. It's going to be in the news for the next coming year until that movie comes out, and then you can go see the movie. Uh, and coming out in July is Hurry Home by Roz Nay, best-selling author of Our Little Secret. This is a suspenseful new thriller featuring two estranged sisters desperate to keep their deepest and darkest secret where it belongs in the past. Hurry Home is utterly engrossing and claustrophobic and a tantalizing reflection of the chain and shackles relationship between sisters that asks, what lines wouldn't you cross for your own? So definitely binge reads, perfect for right now, distracting, highly recommended. <laughs> Thanks for all those great mysteries, Maureen. I'm making you bigger on my screen. <laughs> I felt pressure. I had to have more props this time. I know. need a, a pipe. <laughs> in my trench coat. Um, but just to add from the audio front, well, I, I actually shared this article with Maureen recently. There was a study years back um, from um, some psychologists in London who said that you have a more visceral reaction from listening to an audiobook versus watching a movie, like people's heart rates faster, a certain amount of beats per minute when listening to the audio versus watching it. So if you really want to get your heart racing before the movie comes out, you can listen to the <laughs> audiobook of these thrillers. And um, I have to say, a lot of casting has not been announced yet since some of these are coming out later in the year, but The Familiar Dark will be read by Lisa Flanagan. And then J.P. Delaney's books on audio are always phenomenal. Just to give some of his backlist info, the girl before won an Audiophile Earphones Award who said J.P. Delaney's intricate psychological thriller immediately entangles us and the gifted narrators keep us spellbound. And then Believe Me and The Perfect Wife both got starred audio reviews from Booklist. And they were some of the best I've ever read. Like, believe me, Booklist said, makes full use of the audio format and elevates the recording to emblematic status. So if that doesn't sell you on it, what will? And then The Perfect Wife, um, this is interesting, has an afterword that's read by the author himself where he shares some insights from his life and what influenced the story. So just some more fun reader's advisory tidbits with those mysteries. What will you pick? <laughs> <laughs> Let us know in the comments. All right, and now we also wanted to honor our brave healthcare workers uh, by sharing with you these books about the working lives of nurses and doctors. So first up is Tracy Kidder's Mountain Beyond Mountains, Mountains Beyond Mountains, a magnificent account of Dr. Paul Farmer that shows how one person can make a difference in solving global health problems through a clear-eyed understanding of the intersection of politics, wealth, social systems, and disease. We also have Christy Watson's The Language of Kindness, is a moving, lyrical, beautifully written portrait of a nurse and the lives she has touched. Christy spent 20 years as a nurse, and in this powerful book, she takes us by her side down hospital corridors to visit the wards and meet her unforgettable patients. Um, and in the, in the forthcoming memoir, The Beauty and Breaking, Michelle Harper, an emergency room physician, explores how a life of service to others taught her how to heal herself. The e Galley is available now, so you can dip into the hopeful, moving, and poignant true story of a doctor's journey toward recovery. Um, next, we have Dr. Dogs. I mean, I'm not really sure I need to say anything about this. Just look at the cover. <laughs> Dr. Dogs. Um, but this really... <laughs> I don't have a real dog. I wish I did. <laughs> I do, but you don't want them here right now. I do. I want them. They're not Dr. Dogs. <laughs> they are not. <laughs> Uh, but this thrilling, delightful journey takes you into the heartwarming and fascinating new world of doctor dogs. Dogs who detect cancer, dogs who alert people to seizures, and then dogs who are helping those with anxiety, depression, and PTSD. And you don't have to be a dog lover to care deeply about what these dogs are doing and what we are learning from them. Although if you're not a dog lover, you probably will by, by the end of this book. Um, next, written by two primary care doctors, and excuse my very lapsed high school Spanish, uh, Guía Práctica de Primeros Auxilios 
is an essential first aid guide in Spanish that provides step-by-step -step measures for minor accidents and medical emergencies. This is a really important reference title for homes, restaurants, libraries, schools, and other workspaces where um, English is a second language for employees and or residents. And then finally, we have Cutting for Stone, a sweeping, emotionally riveting novel about twin brothers born of a secret union and bound together by a shared fascination with medicine who come of age as Ethiopia hovers on the brink of revolution. Cutting for Stone is an unforgettable and thralling family saga of Africa and America, doctors and patients, exile and home. And just to add on to this great slide, um, you may or may not know, but we do have also a young readers adaptation of Mountains Beyond Mountains by Tracy Kidder, which is available in um, ebook and audio. So definitely check that out or recommend it to families who are at home who might want to listen together. And um, also to add, Language of Kindness is read by the author herself. So that's a wonderful way to get a more intimate account of this nurse's story and all that she does. And um, also, Beauty and Breaking is likely going to be an author read. I hope so. Um, we'll keep you posted on that. And finally, on this slide, Cutting for Stone is read by Sunil Mal Malhotra, who you may be familiar with. Um, he got an Audiophile Earphones Award for this. And Booklist said, Malhotra's reading is a masterpiece as lovely and complex as this epic novel. So if you're thinking about trying the audiobook or if it's been a while since you've read this bestseller, that could be all a good way to recommend um, patrons re-experience it or hear it for the first time. Oh my gosh, I was surprised <laughs> by this one. But you know, Chelsea, we couldn't leave you right. out. <laughs> you said so, it, it fine. <laughs> I was so surprised by the pop quiz. I didn't even have an instrument ready. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay. <laughs> Chelsea, what online performance or webinar other than ours have you streamed recently? Well, yesterday I watched the, um, I guess, second episode of John Krasinski has that new like web oh, series. Yeah. Good news. Um, it's yeah. Very, very cute. And I really loved the, I mean, I'm a fan of Hamilton, a fan of Hamilton, as I'm sure <laughs> everyone is. And um, so I really enjoyed that little surprise performance. It was very, very cute. It was so good. I loved it. I, I've been watching so much theater online stuff myself. And that one really caught me by surprise because I didn't see it coming. Like I've been going on Playbill and Theater Mania and watching their like Broadway at home from the living room things, oh, yeah. but that was just so cool. And that little nine-year-old girl, so cute. What a, what a lucky little lady! I can't wait till she, she flies. Was, like, to, the whole yeah, time. I know. I know. I it's so cute yourself. to see her mixed in. Yeah. <laughs> so here's Lynn Manuel Miranda, in our <laughs> webinar. <now. laughs> Can you imagine? Oh, <laughs> I mean, he is one of our authors, and he did read his audiobook of Good Morning, Good Night, and then his dad read the Spanish version, which I had on the coloring slide. So it doesn't seem ridiculous that he should join our podcast. I mean, our 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 webcast. <laughs> Let's make a public call. Lin Manuel, join us. <laughs> he just did a reading for that Jennifer Gardner celebrity uh, picture book reading series oh, yeah. on Instagram. Yeah, very cute. That is. There have been so many heartwarming things to see on online lately, which has been a, a, yeah. a bright spot, I think, for all of us. Um, and I wanted to briefly mention our weekly Twitter chat. Uh, you can join us every Thursday at 12 p.m. Eastern on Twitter, where patrons will tweet in requests for book recommendations using the hashtag AskLibrarian. Um, and then librarians can answer and you know, interact with patrons, uh, tell them what books they think they'd love. It's a really great way to you know, stay connected with your patrons and keep your uh, reader's advisory skills sharp. So we hope, you see, we hope to see you there tomorrow. And just to mention again, um, there were a lot of questions about eGalleys. So please um, reach out to us um, and let us know if you need to be whitelisted. What is the best way, I'm asking the panelists live, pop quiz for them to <laughs> contact us <laughs> if they need to? Is it through the survey, you think, or email? You could, let, you could contact us at library at penguinrandomhouse.com. Yeah. So, um, so that's how we can set you up for, for that. And then as promised, we're so glad you've been using the PRH Morning Buzz hashtag. I can't wait to check out what's been happening this morning. So next up, we have a very special request for you. Group crowdsourcing. We want you to tell us your favorite book set in a library or bookstore. 
and then we will reveal the top choices at our buzz next week. So you can either tweet it out to PRH Morning Buzz, the hashtag, or you're going to get a survey after this buzz is over, which it almost is. We're sad to say goodbye, but it's, we've reached the end. So complete our post-buzz survey. Tell us what you thought, and also please answer this question. And we can't wait to have a really amazing list to reveal next week. So that's it. We hope you had fun. We hope that you enjoyed our shenanigans. And um, we really enjoyed having a reason to join together, you know, all, all four of us. I'm so happy to see your guys' faces. And we're happy to know that, that we had so many wonderful friends and new friends from libraries all over the country and Canada um, join us as well. So thank you for taking time out of your morning to drink coffee and talk about books with us. And we hope you'll sign up next week to join us again. We'll have some new books, new audiobooks, more shenanigans, maybe new pop quiz questions or other games. Who knows what could happen? Maybe <laughs> Lin-Manuel will join us. <laughs> I don't know about what that, but we'll see. <laughs> anyway, thank Thank you so much. You can see the tiny URL on your screen. Um, I'll read it for some people who said they're doing audio. Tinyurl.com slash PRH Morning Buzz sign up. And we hope to see you all next week. Thank you for coming. Thanks, guys. Bye, everybody. Bye. 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 This was so much fun. <laughs> it was fun.